Okay, so somebody tell me what the deal is with buffets. The first thing you get is the cutlery, and then you get the napkins, and then you get the dinner roll, bun, whatever you want to call it. All that stuff needs to be at the end because you just spend the whole time juggling it while you've got the plate in one hand, the tongs in the other hand, or the spoon or whatever else, and you're going through all your respective dishes. You could just have it all at the end, but when your plate's already loaded up, you just get your your butter, you set it on top, you get the bun, you set that on top, and then you grab the cutlery, and you're on your way. Fucking backwards, and it drives me crazy every single time I'm at any kind of a buffet dinner. Tell me I'm wrong. You know how sad I am to have him do that, folks? Like, that pains me to allow that to happen after... Not only did I get one text about it, but we saw had somebody on, on, on Twitter uh, bring it up, and I'm like... For mashup forty eight, this is this is what's happening. We're gonna let twos have a little rant about dinner rolls and and a buffet. That's what we're gonna do. That, that's how we're starting it. Well, I mean, you didn't know exactly what direction it was gonna go in until I started. So there's that. I, I had a pretty good feeling that I wasn't gonna enjoy the 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 minute intro. That's that's for damn sure. Uh, welcome I feel to like ma- you probably did. You just don't <laughs> want to admit it. Welcome to mashup forty eight. Uh, where twos gets to rant over the song for the first time in a very, very long time. Maybe the first time ever on uh, on live. Is that possible? It probably is. You've been an absolute miser about it for the past. Oh, it's been it's been amazing. I, I have got to chuckle every week on Tuesday, uh, Monday night, except for tonight. Except for tonight. Tonight, I'm a little pain. Mashup 48 brought to you by Vance Crow and Legacy interviews you know uh, a professionally recorded video conversation between an individual and uh, mr crow aimed at capturing the essence of your life stories memories insights and valuable less uh, life lessons the goal is to preserve the individual wisdom for future generations in the form of a timeless video and optional leather bound uh, autobiography uh, an offer for the tuesday mashup online legacy interview uh, of course this is the breakdown of it uh, an in-depth interview covering uh, five areas of your life childhood career marriage parenting and the wisdom of living receive your video digitally to share and we will ship you a special dvd record your interview from the comfort of your home all you need is a computer an internet connection this is a special offer for all you lovely folks who are tuning in to the Tuesday Mashup book today and make sure you have it at least uh, two full hours to record uninterrupted before April 30th, 2023. All the details will be in uh, the show notes on Spotify, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, hey, fans curl, wherever you're driving in St. Louis, mm-hmm. just make sure to keep it between the between the lines. Yeah, it it's interesting. Like I've got... Well, I've got several of them, but one uncle in particular, he's just probably the most interesting person that I have ever met. And he's one of those guys that anytime, you know, we're together for any kind of a family get together or anything like that, or if I go up and visit him or, you know, whatever it is, I can just ask him some random question from, you know, anything, you know, what was current events 30 years ago, some big thing that's kind of I've always wondered about the background of or whatever else. And it doesn't matter what I ask him. He can just talk to me for hours about anything. And I find him just to be absolutely fascinating. And I just, you know, as soon as the legacy interview thing comes up, I just think like, well, you know what? That's the kind of person that would do magically, wonderfully amazing with, with something like this legacy interview. And I feel like everybody probably has, somebody like that in their family well here's the thing if you don't do it and then something drastic happens you just don't get a reset button and away you go right so uh you, i think everybody has multiple in their family in their life and uh they probably always think oh yeah i'll get to it in another year's time or you know they're pretty young still and all that you know and it's just like mm, if you're thinking about it probably just do it i mean you're gonna have vance crow being the guy asking the questions how much fun will that be for whoever's getting interviewed i mean oh, yeah. uh, i've i've been in, i've been lucky enough to sit across and do a couple of those it's fantastic so uh yeah i would i would say uh, if that's something of interest uh and you uh, are at all interested in your little bit like wh- what the heck is this fire me a text in the text line and i'll direct you to the right spot all that good stuff or it'll be in the show notes spotify etc and uh, yeah, hey, uh, side note on uh, this past weekend, twos, uh, mm-hmm. 
the Newman boys along with uh, the Rogers uh, uh, brothers and along with a whole bunch of guys won the Never Sweats Border Cup hockey tournament this weekend. No big deal. Congratulations. No big deal. Yeah, no big deal. So, so you're coach of the year then? I was Reggie Dunlop. I was a player coach. The final game went to a uh, shootout. Ooh, six, nice six, six rounds. Anyways, yeah, it was it was a ton of fun. You guys it was put a ton on the foil or what? Uh, we thought about it, but we did not. And uh, to, speaking of hockey, we're gonna set we're gonna set the clock here. Uh, we got 24, 24. We got fourteen um, topics, <sighs> and I feel like yesterday last time I was like bang on. I said forty three minutes, and uh, I'm gonna go forty six because I know there's a little a uh, couple ones in here that I think might go just a smidge longer, and we never seem to hit twenty eight minutes. So here we go. We're okay. starting. What if? We brought back uh, the Golden Seals. I assume you're referencing the California Golden Seals. Uh, the, yeah, NHL the NHL and... team in San Francisco in the 70s. <laughs> the the NHL... NHL didn't get the reference. The NHL, uh, it, it seems odd. We don't really talk the NHL a whole lot, but lately we've been bringing it up quite often. The NHL and some of its teams are facing fallout over players who don't want to take part in the Pride Night, a show of support for the LGBTQ fans and athletes. There are concerns the league's handling of situation could set uh, back years of progress on the LGBTQ inclusivity, though some would say the sport has not progressed far enough. And the timing couldn't be worse. Not only is hockey facing a reckoning over toxic culture in the sport, including sexual misconduct and various forms of discrimination, but the situation coincides with the LGBTQ uh, people facing a new surge of hate and in parts of the U.S. at least a rollback and a long fought uh, for rights. Pride Nights have become an annual affair for the NHL with every team hosting its own version of the event since uh, 2018. Although there are several components to highlight is often seeing players on ice uh, for warm-ups with random uh, rainbow logos, random rainbow logos on their jerseys or rainbow tape wrapped around their sticks, as I brought up and you can see. But this year, some players have, uh, have said wearing any of the symbols supporting LGBTQ people goes against their religious beliefs. Meanwhile, three teams, Minnesota Wild, the New York Rangers, and Chicago's NHL teams have canceled the Pride Night altogether. Uh, Pride Night warm-ups, I should say, though kept other events. Okay, first off, do you remember when they first started painting crosswalks with the rainbows? Yeah, certainly. Okay. And then what was happening with them? I don't know what was happening with them. I, well, I actually can't people remember. were doing burnouts across them and they were just leaving big black streaks across it. Right. Okay. okay. And then everybody gets all mad because is that a hate crime now? And so all these NHL teams who are putting rainbow tape on their sticks, Sean, if you've got some nice white tape on your stick, what does it look like after about five minutes? <laughs> There's some burnouts on it for sure from Pox, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they really didn't think this through at all, right? Uh, it's just the, it's silly. Like, this is, uh, I should have reached out to some gay friends and just been like, how much do you care about hockey? Because I feel like this is such a, um, it's such a huge push for something that nobody's really all that interested in. And conspiracy theory time, put on my tinfoil hat for a second. I honestly think that they're just doing this to avoid saying, well, why aren't you hiring more of, you know, why, why are you not uh, drafting more LGBTQ double a whatever people, right? Because they want to, when you're, Drafting for a team, when you're putting a team together, it's entirely merit. And as soon as you start throwing quotas into it, you're screwed. And so I'm wondering if maybe this is them just trying to stem the the push that they're getting before it becomes, well, every team's got to have a certain amount of ice time dedicated to gay people. And that might or might not work out well, but do you really want to take the chance? And this is just beautiful. The Edmonton Oilers, the the Coilers, and they're coming out of the Rainbow Tunnel. Now, I'm, I'm not a huge expert on, on gay stuff, but I feel like if you're going to name part of somebody's anatomy the Rainbow Tunnel, the Edmonton Oilers would be the perfect thing to come out of it. Um, How long have you been preparing that one on me for? Well, it wasn't an accident that I asked you to show that clip. 
Oh, I should have I should have clued in. I should have clued in. You know, uh, I was saying this um, right off the right off the the start of us like starting to cover. You know, James Reimer and and Ivan Provorov, mm-hmm. and now all this. You know, at the start, I'm like, I you know, by them covering it, it actually becomes more of a big deal than what it actually it was, does. right? Because I didn't and, even and know about the... Oh, I was just gonna say Provorov's jerseys sold out. How many of the Gay Pride event jerseys are being sold? Maybe they're maybe they're being sold a ton. I don't know, but I, I'm like, Probably if if, they, many. if if they hadn't have blown up Ivan Provorov, would we have known about it? Would anyone have been like, oh wow? No, they wouldn't have. Yeah. It just went on. They Streisand themselves. They yeah, they did. They yep. they totally did. And now it's exposed that the Rangers, I'm like the New York Rangers, aren't doing it. Isn't that isn't that interesting? New York City, Chicago. Well, I don't know. Minnesota I, Wild. I like... Minnesota Wild's home of Black Lives Matter, man. Like, I mean, maybe not, but that's George I, Floyd. Well, territory. I mean, the Rangers, Rangers like, I get. Like, I, I feel like this event would be more of an Islanders thing than no, a Rangers g- g- thing. No, come on. Minnesota, Democrats. New York, Democrats. Mm-hmm. Am I missing something here? Why Why are those two? I don't why? Know. I just, I, I don't understand. Anyways, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, this, this, the When the you rainbow... make something mandatory, people yes. are going to push back. I, I agree, but sure. now, but the the thing is, is I think even a few years ago, 2018, when they first started doing this, I don't think it really uh, everyone Rainbow Tail, oh, okay, yeah, sure, whatever, it's not that big a deal. But now you got drag time, drag queen story time, and you got things like that being associated with all of this. And there's a lot of parents out there; they're putting their backs up and going, "What are we doing?" And that's what. And then they and then they try to make an example of Rhymer instead of everybody. Yep. Cash and, them. and then everybody all applauds of a sudden the them. jerseys all the cr- are flying off the shelves. Right? It, 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 when you say they Streisand themselves, I I really think you're bang on too. So that's my thought. Um, and I just once again, you, you go like it, this seems like such a non-issue. Like, but whatever. Okay, we got uh, rats sinking a seaworthy ship. I want to say that one more time. Rats sinking. Uh, a seaworthy ship. Uh, Alberta Finance Minister Travis Taves and Environment uh, uh, Environment Minister Sonia Savage have announced they won't seek re-election just two months ahead of the province's spring general election. Taves, who placed second in the leadership contest just months ago, said he remains deeply committed to the conservative movement, and he said it has been an honor to serve. Um, leadership contender, uh, this was uh, on top of those two. Leadership contender Leela here, who placed uh, last in the contest, also now she won't seek re election. And Rajan Sani, who placed second last, has said she won't seek re election in her riding of Calgary Northeast. It sounds like she wants to move ridings, but hey. So there's, uh, there's a bunch of people um, not coming back. They obviously, I don't know, have their thoughts. I really don't want to have to do this. Okay. It's it seems as though Daniel Smith is getting rid of the bullshit Jason Kenny in it for themselves Sky Palace party members. Like Travis Taze, when when Travis Taze was on the ballot for leadership of the UCP, he basically embodied everything that Jason Kenny was and stood for. He was established, which is fuck all. He was right? he was the establishment. I'm not gonna yeah, shit so on he's, I'm, he's, I'm not he's, gonna shit on Taves because I got to interview all these people and mm-hmm. Taves got to rewrite the ship in a bit of a, of a way or maybe a major way with mm-hmm. the finances and everything else. Or no, too is you're you're shaking your yes head at and me. No, here. I mean here's the thing. Like when you look at the amount of royalty revenue that just sprang back up in the last couple of years, even the NDP could have balanced that budget, right? Okay. Uh, I, so them to say, okay, well, we got a small surplus. Is it really that big of an accomplishment? I can't really give them much props for that, right? But but here's the thing. is like when you look at Travis Taze, it's just a continuation of everything Jason Kenny wanted it to be, which was just all about him and being self-serving and being just a little bit less left-wing than Rachel Notley. Whereas Daniel Smith, <sighs> I know, Daniel Smith seems... <laughs> Come on. I know <laughs> this is killing me, but Daniel Smith is actually saying, okay, well, what if we actually were a fiscally responsible party? And that probably doesn't sit too well with people like Travis Taze. 
whom I have no allegiance to because I've never met. Yeah, I just think back to when they were running for UCP leadership, you know? And um, one of the things that I always stuck out, uh, stood out about Danielle, obviously how she handled herself at debates. Yes. But but one of the best debates I went to was the APP, Alberta Prosperity, Prosperity Project. Project yep. It had um, Modry and Ezra Levant as the two question acts, answers. Huh. And um, A, I've never seen better questions. Like I was taking notes too. It was, it was fantastic how they attacked uh, the politicians, like a great sparring match. Um, instead of just, uh, you know, going for a couple uh, light taps, though, they were swinging for all out. And you had, uh, you know, you had Daniel Smith show up, you had Todd Lowen show up. And I, I can't remember if Brian Jean was the third one. I thought there was three. But there was four of the seven didn't show up. And who was one of them who didn't show up? Travis Tate. And well, he, you and, every, know, and you everybody know said. That if he's going to sit there with Ezra Levant. He's going to get torn to pieces. Oh, Maybe. And, and maybe that was strategic on their part. But as me going, uh, I, I'm looking for a leader to lead us out of this shithole. Yep. And by that, I mean, honestly, what we've been living through the last three years. And, it, you know, like we can sit here and go you know, this and this. I, I think by all accounts, from majority of the people I've talked to in the UCP, they wanted him to stay. They, they thought he was excellent in his job and, and was in the right position. But as soon as he didn't win, everything everything changed. And, and you know, it was like, I, oh, yeah, I'm going to stay. And as soon as he didn't win, it changed. So, I mean, I guess it's better to have uh, have those people step away because you want people on the team that are there to win, not mm -hmm. there to just fill a spot. That's my thoughts. Perfect. Show me a buzzer. <laughs> Vigilant, vigilante snare criminals. Cops get mad at them. Um, you know, this just continues to be a, a long string of, uh, of, of people going out of their way to, to clean up some things. A Courtney man is at home uh, recuperating from injuries after he was allegedly assaulted by a 16-year-old boy when he caught the teen kicking his door in the early hours for a social media stunt. I, this shows how much I know all about this, uh, too. Is it, I, first, I'd ever heard of it. But after, police viewed, but after police viewed video of Monday's incident, Owen May, 48, was told there was a possibility he would be charged. Not the guy booting his door, okay? Yeah. For four and a half years, May and his life, Laura, 42, have had their front door kicked in the middle of the night, and he said it would happen for a week or two and then stop for a while before happening again. I just wanted it to stop, uh, he said, and he was, his background's a fishing guide for 22 years. So he bought a security camera to try and catch the perpetrator. The next morning, he had video showing a person kicking his door at 1 a.m., showed the video with police. The person came back the uh, for two more nights. May then strung fishing line across his front door when he saw the person walk up his driveway at uh, 118. He and his wife jumped out of bed, went to confront their tormentor. When the person kicked the door, their foot got caught in the line. Laura May attempted to apprehend him, but another person rushed up, and both strangers carried flashlights and used them to bludgeon bludgeon May's <laughs> like they hit him with freaking flashlights him Anyways, and his wife and then they yeah, tore off wife, her clothes and then they, yeah it says all, I was on my knees with one of them bashing my head and I saw the other one ripping my my wife's pajamas off there she was naked in her front yard and he might be facing criminal charges yeah I'm at, like this has been going on for four and a half years so for four and a half years he's been calling the cops saying hey can you please do something and then they say no. And then he says, okay, well, you know what? I got a security camera and I videotaped these a-holes. I've got video evidence. Can you come do something? And they say no. And then he says, okay, well, you know what? It's been half a decade of me kick getting my door kicked in and, and getting it fixed and repaired and dealing with this in the middle of the night. And then he takes matters into his own hands. And then they trip up on the fishing line that he sets up that would have never been an issue had they not been kicking his literal door in. And then he gets to the bottom of it, rounds up the kids. And then the cops are like, well, you know what? We might have to charge you for this. Like, no, 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 no. I should be charging you. Like, I'm doing your job. You can make the check out to me. And... You guys can just go fuck off to be mall cops or some stupid shit because I'm the only one actually upholding truth, justice, and everything else. Uh, and the only way we can make this any better is to follow it up by the NDP or not a serious party. What, what do you got for me this week, Tuz? 
there is an absolute conglomerate. There's so many articles in here that I'm sure we're not even going to get to them. <laughs> how, about, how about we start with Marty's tweet? How about, how about we go there? Marty, fan of the show. He's been on before. We need to have him on again. I hope there's some kind of a big event coming up that we could pick for him to, to come along to. <laughs> Are you are you talking about an election coming up too? Is that what you're talking about? I'm not talking about anything just yet, but wouldn't it be cool? <laughs> you want to you want to talk about uh, covering an election in the middle of NDP or not a serious party? I'm cool with it because I mean, at the end of the end of the day, the NDP are not a serious party, and we could we could seriously uh, talk about it for a little bit if you'd like. Uh, here's the demographics of uh, okay. of uh, the top well, ten non English mother tongues mm -hmm. in Alberta. Okay, and why is that relevant, Sean? Well, because they're trying to create a curriculum for one of the foreign tongues, essentially. One of the right? lesser known ones. Is it on that list, Sean? Uh, it is not on this list. Okay, so Sarah Hoffman, the former um, Minister of Health, who that that's just total bait. Nobody even just take, just ignore the fact that they had a 350 pound woman as the minister of health. It's just bait. There's a million jokes to be made and they're all just going to be used against you. So just ignore the fact that this morbidly obese woman was the minister of health. Okay. <laughs> now she is saying that Alberta needs to have a special curriculum for Somali immigrants. Okay. Fair enough. Where's the logic behind that? Right. Do the, do we have special curriculums for everybody else? You know, with, because it would make sense if you're going to allocate resources, you would want to make the most difference with the fewest amount of dollars, right? So you would start with, oh, let's see here. Number two, Chinese, which counts Cantonese and Mandarin, or Tagalog, French, Punjabi, German, Spanish, Arabic, Urdu, Vietnamese, selected Aboriginal languages, Ukrainian, Polish, Russian, Korean, Hindi, Dutch, the selected Niger Congo languages, Persian, Guarati, and Italian are all above. We could literally tell people to go like this a bibidi bobbidi boopy, and it would make more fiscal sense than what they're proposing. Do you want to show? Do you want to show Singh's text uh, tweet? Do you want? Do you want that up there? Because you know I can bring up the demographics, but I I'm mean, sorry, you literally, I, I spent I spent more time yelling than I was supposed to, but. But Jagmeet Singh's an idiot. Um, the Ontario NDP won their by-election with an openly racist candidate. But it was okay because she's in a wheelchair and she's black. But I want to go to this snake-in-the-grass thing that the Alberta NDP did leading up to the election. So they got this guy named Todd Hirsch to come up with a bunch of economic recommendations. And so it's this 21-page report. And it's not even edited right. I'm going to read a little clip from it. Of course, anything could happen, and it could be happening. Okay, <laughs> and then and then it's funny because they talk about natural resource revenue as NRR, and then they put NRR in brackets, which is the thing you would do the first time you mention it, and then every time subsequently in the document you would just call it NRR. Well, they say natural resource revenue NRR in brackets like six times throughout the document. Okay, and it's a bunch of stuff that sounds good until you actually dissect it, right? And they they had 37 people consulting on this. I used to know one of the guys who was actually involved. I didn't have a chance to reach out to him. Um, but, you know, one of the things was is that they said they wanted to uh, limit deficits to or limit their uh, debt to GDP ratio to 1.3. So they would have um, in in the case of, for example, this year, 68.3 a uh, billion dollars was the the provincial budget so they could run a de deficit of about 22 billion dollars in this fiscal year they're going to limit themselves and i get it like this is absolute restraint for the ndp in this year when we've got billions of dollars of surpluses if they were in charge of the budget according to this document they would only post a deficit of 23 billion dollars so, I mean, oh, great. Oh, well done. Well done. You guys are really turning things around. But it's funny. Like, they compare themselves to Norway. And they...
big dirty shit hawks indeed sean they compare themselves to norway and they don't really get into any of the specifics without getting into it you see but what they happens basically folks really get delicately say that it isn't <laughs> applicable because norway doesn't pay equalization Oh, but they man. can't really say that because that's going to play into the UCP. And so they pussyfoot around it. And so this whole thing is just an exercise in not being openly honest about any of it. And I'm doing all the talking because Sean <laughs> didn't fucking read it. You Give know, what's funny. Buzzer. You know, what's funny. I already gave you shit hawks. I already gave you a buzzer and you just keep, you just, you're on a tear. I, I can't, you know, the only thing I can do folks is take them out of the feed for a couple of <laughs> seconds, but somewhere somebody's laughing in a grocery store or watching their painter almost fall off a ladder. And I, you, sometimes you just got to let it go. Okay. So I let it go. And there it is. Here we go. Everything except Justin Trudeau is blackface. So this is, I'd never heard of this before. I love to learn new things. It's a new idea. You may be wearing digital blackface. I was like, what is that? It caught me. The headline, you know, it was an interesting read. So here we go. Maybe you shared that viral video of Kimberly Sweet Brown Wilkins telling a reporter after narrowly escaping an apartment fire, ain't nobody got time for that. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you posted a meme of supermodel Tyra Banks exploding in anger on America's next top model. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. Or maybe you've simply posted popular G or gifts, such as the one of the NBA great Michael Jordan crying or of a drag queen or a RuPaul declaring, girl, if you're black and you've shared such images online, you get a pass. But if you're white, you have, may have inadvertently perpetuated one of the most insidious forms of contemporary racism. You may be wearing digital blackface. Digital blackface. In case we haven't figured it out yet. Yeah, is so a practice where sure, white yeah. people co-opt online expressions of black imagery, slang, catchphrases, or culture to convey comic relief or express emotions. Now, this is really interesting because white liberal people enjoy using emojis of color to show that they're they're cognizant of you know the fact that there's diversity amongst emoji colors and things like that. And now the question is: is that is that blackface as well? Or because I mean, hey, you know what? If it's one, it's also the other. And so now you're just accusing all of these white liberals of committing digital blackface. The other funny thing is that I was thinking about this like a couple months ago. And I thought, you know what? Wouldn't it be kind of fun to just say like, oh, are we doing, you know, is it cultural appropriation for me to use black people gifts? And then I was like, oh, that's, that's just a little bit too far out there. And then, lo and behold, CNN of all places shows me that, you know what? I didn't even go far enough with it. I can't believe you found that article. That's that's what I have a hard time with. I'm like, what? I can't believe you didn't see it. It was everywhere. <sighs> Sometimes I just, I just turn the blinders on and I just wait for you to send me something that's really going to, you know, I don't even need coffee to read that one. I just, oh, okay. this is interesting. Well, buckle up, buddy, because this next one is a real <laughs> kick in the nuts. Tra transgender dispute over what is considered a carry-on uh, a transgendered woman has, was left in tears at jfk i report after she claims a tsa agent punched her in the testicles while she was going through security the daily mail reported the unidentified flyer took the social media event about her incident in which she said the agent humiliated her in front of everyone in the series of posts that have been since deleted according to the outlet i don't know how much more do you want me to read of this uh, oh um how about uh, if you get into the part in, in the Daily Mail version where there's that tweet of her that says, have it crop stopped crying since an hour ago. My balls still hurt so bad. Uh, I'm not an expert on this stuff, but it seems to me that if if you're a transgender, you're you're actually a woman and, and therefore you don't have balls. And I think you can keep them. Can I mean, you not? Well, no, because now you're a woman. And everything about you is a woman, and there's nothing man about you. You are now perfectly a woman. So you'd think if somebody was taking a shot at your balls, they would miss. And it so apparently, so you can change your gender. On, yes, a on law your ID. passed in 2021 uh, allows Americans are allowed to legally change their gender on their passports, yeah. passports, without the need for medical documents. But the problem is, is when you go, you know, that scanner where you go and you put your arms up and then it spins around you real fast a couple times, you know, it does the whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah. Did you realize, <laughs> did you realize that it would register that? 
Well, apparently, if you're a woman and there's something something dangling in your crotch, <laughs> it registers as a foreign object that shouldn't be there. And so then the TSA people say, okay, they look well, at you're your a back. woman on paper. What are you trying to hide in your britches? What's going on over there? And so then they got to root around and feel out and be like, oh, it's a dick. <laughs> And so these are the unintended consequences of this stuff, right? So now if you're a transgender, you're, you're a dude who decides that they're a woman, they think you're packing heat because in some senses you are. Can you imagine the Monday morning meeting with the, the TSA agents going like, yeah, so this happened. And like, how are we like, what, what are we supposed to do? I, I don't know. The passport reads to the female, but the machine picks up a foreign object between her legs. Yeah. We need to know if it's a ma a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Saskatchewan Liberal, Liberal Party rethinking its brand. The Sask Liberal Party um, <laughs> will seek to change its name after being passed in a motion uh, at their AGM. The party received 355 votes in the last provincial election. Total. Yep. Total. 355 uh, votes. The, it goes, the idea is to really try and reconnect with the public here. It's no secret that we haven't exactly been the most successful political party in Saskatchewan. In the 2020 provincial election, the Saskatchewan Liberal Party received 355 votes, which was 0.08% of the total 444,000, almost 445,000 votes cast. And he's hoping that uh, uh, a rebranding of the Sask Liberal Party can help with dwindling voter turnout in the province. Um, the, the two party, <laughs> the two party voter turnout that's been going on in historic lows here. People are looking for something that best reflects them and they're not seeing it. I would argue that, uh, maybe, uh, Sask United party might, uh, be more in line with some of, uh, Sask voters values. That'd be my guess. It seems to me that that's correct. And also it's not exactly fair to say that they're the liberal party because technically the Saskatchewan party is an amalgamation of the conservative and the liberal party. And so these are the people who said, oh, well, that's not good enough for us. We're going to be stalwart diehards. And this is the hill we're going to die on. And they died a lonely death. <sighs> Canada, you know, I was just saying this, this like this morning, mm -hmm. what the mashup does to me it really messes with my brain when we bring up the numbers of people. So here we go. Canada's governor general gives zero shits. And we're not yeah, kidding. So this that's one. that's the important number. That is the this. important. Yes. Zero. Okay. Zero. Okay. The governor general and her husband, Whit Fraser, and 31 other guests departed Canada on October 17th, 2021 to attend the Frankfurt Frankfurt Book Fair in Germany. Billed as the world's largest trade show for book publishers and organized by the German Publishers and Book Sellers Association. Uh her first overseas trip as vice regal cost taxpayers over $700,000 in travel expenses yep. for a four day trip, including a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand in in-flight catering costs for the transatlantic flight documents for real. Okay. In-flight meals for the trip came to $103,000 consisting of 98 breakfasts, 325 lunches and 107 dinners for 33 passengers, passengers as well as the crew. Okay. That breaks down to $194 a meal. That's yep. what they were spending. $194 a meal. And if you if you figure it out, you say, okay, this is what the cost was for 33 people. It's it's three grand per person for just the in-flight meals on a right. four-day trip. So that's just, that just just think like if you went if you were on some big ass, you know, those not just the big planes that go transatlantic, but the huge planes that go trans Pacific. Sure. Okay. You get everybody on that flight and you add up everything they spend on food on that flight. It's probably not even that. And I, and I can't have, see it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, it's, I, I, it's, it's mind numbing. And then this is the same woman that a couple weeks ago was just saying that she's turning off all the social media comments because everybody's racist. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I okay, forgot about that. Th this might sound yeah. a little bit insensitive, but the First Nations people didn't have currency. So is that cultural appropriation? Is she culturally appropriating all of this? Right. I don't think so. But in this woke world, 
why is the shoe never on the other foot? It, it's a stupid point to make, but it's valid by their logic. And that points out how stupid their logic is, right? Here's another and number so, that here's well, another yeah, number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, say, let's get into the other, other other expenses include a fifty eight thousand dollar in airfare for a four person advanced visit team for Global Affairs Canada. Four people. Yep. Sixty grand. That's fifteen okay. grand a person for four for for flying across and back. Nick Nanos from Nanos Polling was on that flight. Why the hell is a pollster flying to Germany for a book fair at the expense of our Canadian taxpayers? Does that make any sense? No, because none of this does, because they don't give a shit. This is right after she spent $90,000 just to fly back to her hometown in northern Quebec. She's in Ottawa, and she flies to northern Quebec, and it costs $90,000? Uh, um, yeah, I mean, at this point, at this point, it's like, <sighs> oh, man, we need, yeah. This Trudeau does not give a fuck. Trudeau, Trudeau cuts his cuts off his dong. Uh, I, I mean, well played there, sir. The Trudeau government determined that there was no actionable actionable evidence in quotes after it received a CSIS transcript of an early 2021 conversation between Liberal MP Handong and China's top diplomat in Toronto, according to a senior government source, saying conclusions could not be drawn that Mr. Dong asked Beijing to keep two Canadians in prison for political reasons. But when the allegation against Mr. Dong surfaced in a global news report on Wednesday, the MP left the Liberal caucus to sit as an independent. On Thursday, he told the Globe and Mail that he intends to launch a defamation lawsuit against Global News, which citing two unnamed national security sources reported the assertions related to Michael Spaver and Michael Korvig. Kor Kovrig. Uh, Mr. Dong said he would never advocate that the two Canadians should be kept in jail to benefit liberals. Uh, a national security source told The Globe in February that Mr. Dong is uh, is at the time of the conversation with the consul general was also under surveillance by CSIS because China's Toronto consulate considered him one of Beijing's strongest allies and lines of access into parliament. CSIS code name for him was Scarecrow, according to the source. Anyways. Yeah, that's because liberals don't have brains. Okay, one of the one of the excuses. So, like, just just imagine this. Okay, there's two Canadian prisoners being held, political prisoners being held in China, and and this whole thing with them is kind of getting weird. And I feel like I don't really want to get into it until I know more about it. But something stinks. Like the fact that they were in the parliament. Like you think about it. Like they they were in parliament, and then they went out for dinner with Trudeau and Biden. And it seems to me that if I got held on trumped up charges in China for three years while my prime minister was grandstanding and doing jack shit, and then the Americans actually got me out, and then I get invited to go to the Canadian parliament and then go for dinner with Trudeau, I would tell him to get fucked. And when even when we land in Canada and he's there to greet us, I would have just... I pulled a favor from some total stranger who hates Trudeau and just been like, look, can I just get a private plane sitting on the tarmac? And then when Trudeau goes to just welcome me with open arms, be like, I'm going to stop you there. This whole Canada thing with you isn't really working for me anymore. So I'm going to go to Costa Rica and you guys can all eat a dick. And I just hop on that plane and leave him standing there looking like an idiot on the tarmac. Right. But, but none of that has happened anyway. So, so Handong apparently told, the guys in China that it would work in the opposition's favor if they got if they released the Michaels. So he should hold or so China should hold these two Michaels longer because it's better politically for the liberals. Which is and this is saying a lot, it's probably the most despicable thing I've heard about the liberals so far. And one of the one of the things saying, you know, one of the excuses going around is that um, the word delay and immediately sound kind of the same in mandarin okay but but one of them is and i'm i'm not a chinese speaker but one of them's yang chi and the other ones is li ji de which don't really sound at all that much alike it's like saying hippopotamus and houseplant or even hippopotamus and elephant like i mean hippopotamus not... and thursday they're not similar at all so this there's just so much bullshit flying around on this that 
you know, like I was writing a special episode, my 222 cents about this whole thing. And I'm like, this is also premature. Like, I don't know where any of this is going. And it's just, it's fallen in the line a little bit too neatly in some places. And it doesn't make a lick of sense in others. And it's raising my hackles. We, we like to say people kind, not necessarily mankind. Uh, yeah. it's more inclusive. There we go. Exactly. <laughs> yes, thank you. And the budget will balance itself. <laughs> Man, you are one you pathetic are one loser. one pathetic loser. <laughs> no, no, no offense. Oh, man. That, that reminds me of my buddy Hans. It's like <laughs> one of his favorite lines from any movie ever. Uh, I, you know, Dumb and Dumber, I, I gotta say, I probably watched that show more than any film in the history of films. Like, it, I don't know, a hundred times. Like, I, it's it's a silly, stupid number. It used to come on all the time. And it's like, you can just watch it over and over again. Cause it's just a, yeah. anyway. Well, I mean, if you're flipping through the channels and there's five minutes left, you're still going to watch it. Yeah. Like, is it the first, uh, anyways, it's so good. Trudeau fucked around. We finally found out. The prime minister's office uh, says Justin Trudeau and his wife stayed in a six thousand dollar per night hotel suite while attending the funeral of queen elizabeth ii they stayed at uh, the corinthia london hotel became the subject of oh a public debate last fall when media honed in on the details of the four hundred thousand dollar trip after obtaining documents Zero from access fucks. to information requests so this is them just pussyfooting around you know oh who was staying there oh we're not going to tell you well who's staying there well here's the access to information document with the name blocked out well who stayed there well it's it's a national security concern if we tell you because someone's going to time cop the guy right and it was exceedingly obvious by the end of it that it was trudeau but they just said we're not going to tell you because fuck you we're still going to get elected in toronto anyway we don't give a shit what you guys think. I'm not accountable to you. I'm accountable to China. Right? I like I, if China, <laughs> if China asked, they would have been like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I was just yeah, we Trudeau. stayed there." You yeah, know, it's yeah. funny. Did you see? But you obviously saw Biden's little uh, slip up where he called Canada China. You know, yes. was was I, that I mean, like a Freudian slip? There for a was, that yes, a Freudian slip? was that a Freudian slip? Was that a Freudian slip? I don't know. Like it's it's hard to tell with that guy. I mean, you like. He's basically just living on adrenaline and shellfish at this point. And he's eating all of it, blended up and giving it to him in a bag. And then it just, I don't even know how that guy's still alive. A, from the fact that he's so old and B, from the fact that Hillary Clinton hasn't murdered him yet, made it look like a suicide. Right. And so. You know, when he screws up, I mean, the guy can't even walk upstairs. How much longer is it going to be before there's an escalator or an elevator going into Air Force One? Because that guy trips himself up more on the stairs than he does talking. And that's saying a lot. I was going to arrest a rapper, but I got high. Ohio-based rap artist Joseph, Joseph Edgar Foreman, known by the name Afro Man, is being sued by seven officers with the adams county sheriff office for using footage of their 2022 uh, search on his home to make up uh, to make and promote a new music uh the officers accused foreman's use of their images and likeness as malicious act that tarnished the reputation and humiliated them according to a complaint one of those so, clips seemingly yep. one of those clips seemingly became the source of inspiration for his new song lemon lemon pound cake and was heavily used in the official music video. In the clip, officers are seen walking through his kitchen, and one of the officers is seen looking several times at a pound cake being kept on the cake stand on the counter. The officer quickly became referenced as Officer Pound Cake by Foreman on social media, a nickname that Foreman also started using on merchandise. <sighs> so the cops bust into his place looking for drugs. They don't find anything. Which is weird, because, I mean, if you've ever listened to his music, you would expect it. But they didn't find anything, and instead, you get this absolute jam. There's them kicking in the door. And so he just said, look, you assholes came in here, you didn't find anything, and now I'm going to make you guys famous. It tastes so nice. It makes 
the sheriff wanna put down his gun and cut him a slide. Of what? Of what? Lemon pound cake. He wanna put down his glass. Lemon pound cake. Trending on TikTok. Lemon pound cake. He's a family guy. Lemon pound cake. Oh man. Okay. Afro so man. Now, now the cops are trying to sue him because he made them look like idiots. He didn't make you look like idiots. You made you look like idiots when you broke in wanting to get all of his drugs and then I fucked the shit out of his lemon pound cake. <laughs> uh, can you believe he made it? I mean, it, it fits half a man. Just like, perfect. I, I was saying the twos before we started this. When I read it, I'm like, and then I listened to the music video. I'm like, can you imagine if that man made a Tuesday mashup? Uh, the smash up and, and just and somehow just had a little bit of fun with it. Like he just has a way of carrying a jingle that, uh, you know, reminds me of younger days, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. We got um, Regina, Regina Council doesn't pussyfoot around new tourism slogans. See uh, what they did there? <laughs> See what they did there? Regina City Councilors say they were blindsided and embarrassed by the recent slogans used in Experience Regina's rebrand. Experience Regina, formerly known as Tourism Regina, officially launched its rebranded strategy last Thursday, along with so slogans such as the city that rhymes with fun and show us your Regina. Uh, <laughs> Backlash over the rebound, uh, rebrand garnered it international attention and experienced Regina campaign making headlines in both Washington Post and BBC. This wasn't just a little oops. It was huge, said Nelson. City councilors approved funding for a tourism Regina rebranding exercise during its budget deliberations in December. And uh, however, councilors said they were not briefed beforehand on the campaign slogans. Um yeah, so so the BBC has quite a lot to to think and say about Regina. Yeah, and and so now now they've gone ahead and just scrubbed it all from social media. So it's like the the man in the canoe; you can't find it. <clears throat> they just snatched it all away. <laughs> they just. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to stop. <laughs> but yeah, this is... Yep. Yeah. What more do we need to say, Sean? Uh, yeah, I, I can't believe they got it through. Uh, you know, like... Yeah, well, it was probably pretty tight. <laughs> <It was> probably... <laughs> Ottawa stinks. According to new data released by Uber on Tuesday, Ottawa has the worst average rider rating in the country, followed by the Toronto, uh, followed by Toronto and Montreal. Uh, according to Uber, cities were rated based on drivers' reviews of their passengers. If you uh, if you're wondering how to improve your city's rating, drivers have shared, shared some tips. They've shared some tips on what you can yeah, do to improve your rating. Don't be an asshole. Pretty much, don't leave your mess behind. Make sure the trash you uh, you take with you, whatever you're in. Drivers suggest passengers should always buckle up and should be on time. Additionally, if you don't respect your driver and slam the doors of the vehicle, you're far more likely to get a negative rating. Mm -hmm. Seems so like sound advice. Toronto's full of assholes. But also, um, the uh, the Senate... The yeah. Senate had to be cleared out because there was like something shit. rotten in Denmark. Yeah, the, the entire Senate building smells like a giant pile of shit. The whole thing just reeks. And they actually had to vacate the premises because of this. Uh, and I thought that was hilarious. And it made me wonder, was it Tom Korski that was telling you months ago about how the Senate was built so that the the drainage for the eaves was built into the walls? Jeez. Was he telling me that? I don't know. I, I can't remember where I picked it up. Maybe maybe it was him talking. I, I feel like it was Tom Korski, but I, I, I know he talks to a lot of people other than just you. He never wants to talk to me for some reason, and I'm hurt. But uh, he was talking somewhere at some point about how the eaves from the building uh, go through the walls, and so they just get piled up with old leaves and whatnot and then get infested with rodents, and then rodents die in there, and the whole thing's just exactly how you would expect some idiot, unaccountable person in government to design things. You know, like it could just slew us off the side of the building. They're like, what if we made it cost more? Oh, uh, how about some happy news? 
uh, and you wonder why they're endangered, here's some happy news for you. I'm going to pull up the, the, the picture of this little uh, gaffer. Um, <clears throat> a 90-year-old radi radiated tortoise named Mr. Pickles is finally a dad. The babies are a big deal because Mr. Pickles is considered the most genetically valuable radiated tortoise in the Association of Zoos and Aquarium Species Survival Plan. Radiated tortoises produce few offspring, and the species is critically endangered. The Houston Zoo announced the good news on March 16th that the three radiated tortoise eggs had hatched. Um, the zoo capers have named them babies Dill, Gherkin, and Jalapeno. Okay. there's th This is nice news because you don't want things to go extinct. Although at the same time, something like 90 or 99% of all the species that have ever existed are extinct right now, right? But um, there, there's a few things that kind of stand out in this. First of all, dude was 90 before he started having kids. Like my grandpa was almost 50 when my dad was born, and that's crazy. Okay? And then the other thing is that the, um, the people who look after them are called herpetology keepers which is not at all i i was i wasn't expecting tortoises at all when i read that <laughs> and I, I figured they'd be sore about that uh and and the other thing they named them what did they name them again uh, um it was uh dill dill gherkin gherkin and, and jalapeno. jalapeno right sure okay. they are radiated tortoises and let's be honest if you name them anything other than Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, and Michelangelo, you are wasting my fucking time. Oh, man. That's going to wrap it up here for uh, 48. 48. We got a twos rant to start. We got some uh, a 90 year old with offspring at the end. It's been a fun yeah, little so roll this time. Those tortoises and we are still swimming. And if you're a, a fan of the Tuesdays, uh, uh, the, the 222 Minutes, we actually got the live on uh, Two's Twitter page tonight as well. So that's uh, a yeah. new spot for us. It's uh, been an which... option the whole time. And there was 443 views. I just refreshed it. We need one more. Come on, guys. Two, two, two times two. You're killing me. <laughs> for the first one, I'd say that'd be perfect. I think that'd be perfect. That, nobody watch it. And, um, you know, we went 40, what did I say? 47 minutes. We're 46, 12 right now. Isn't that just, I'm getting good at oh, this. I'm getting good. Okay. At this. Well, no, 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 no. Okay. I, I could totally but, talk about airports, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Twos. We are rolling this idea around at having a live Alberta election coverage. Well, no, no, no. And we're not. We, th this idea has started rolling down the hill. All right. We're yeah. doing it. We are doing it. We so, are not so walking if, around. So, so when you want to watch in uh, May 29th and you're like, I wonder what's going on with uh, the election, you come find us. We'll be uh, we'll yep. be here. We're we're going to have some live election coverage and uh, we're going to break it down and, and have a little bit of fun on it. We're going it, to it's going to be like Tuesday mashup meets the election coverage that you've come to know and expect from places like Global and CTV and CBC. But what if like, it didn't suck? Yeah, it's gonna be way better. Like, yeah, it's gonna so, be way so better. everything that you hate about watching those, we're not gonna do because we want it to be good because we want you to watch it. We don't, we're, we're not one of those people who says, well, we're getting money from the government, so we don't really give a rat's ass. We are actually trying to earn your patronage here. We're taking this very seriously, which is a lot coming from me. <laughs> We want you guys to be interested in this, to follow along. So, you know what? If, if you're watching at home and you just want to have some boring ass thing that you're just going to mute and just kind of glance at every couple hours anyway, sure, watch global, right? But if you actually want to watch this and be entertained and enjoy yourself and see what happens with it, we're going to be there covering it as it happens. 100%. Well, that's going to do it for, for 48 and uh, look forward to uh, chatting with you next week. Either way, uh, shout out to Vance Crow for uh, being this Real week's quick. But sponsor. if you want to see something on it, let us know. Well, <laughs> well I'd be of curious course. to see. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, I'd be curious to see. Um, I can. I'd be curious what what the listeners will come up with. Either yeah. way, um, forty eight mashups in. This one brought to you by Vance Crow. His legacy interviews. Yep. Uh, look in the Vance. show notes, folks, and uh, we'll we'll. Uh, 
We'll see what we can do there. And, uh, oh, and here we go. And we finally, we got a Lisa Blahey. She said, I enjoy your show. You make me laugh out loud. You both are very entertaining. I'm not sure I do a whole lot of anything. I think I just sit here and, and twos rants for an hour, but hey, that's me. <laughs> I can read a headline and we've proven that twos is very, very poor at this. He can't read texts at times uh, from people. You got to so. have the yin and the yang, buddy. That's right. Okay, folks, we're going to sign off. We'll catch you next Tuesday, or I guess if you're live streaming it Monday night. All right. Thanks, thanks dudes. Guys.